Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, March 25th, uh, 2011. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 3.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 in Hamilton, and in Mexico City it's 9.30 a.m. The clocks uh, go ahead in London this weekend. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is CADEX TV. On this day in history, in 1957, 12 years, less than 12 years after the end of World War II, uh, the Treaty of Rome was signed by the European nations establishing the European Economic Community. First time in a thousand years, really, since the fall of Rome. 2,000 years almost since the fall of Rome that uh, most of Europe came together. Today's birthday, 64 years old today, Reginald Kenneth, Kenneth Dwight. You would know him as Elton John. Happy birthday to him. Now to our main news. The situation in the Japanese nuclear power plant at Fukushima is very, very grave right now. Not good at all. Uh, the Japanese Prime Minister is very pessimistic. He appeared on television, Prime Minister Khan, saying that the power plant situation remains unpredictable. Officials now suspect that a breach of the reactor core at one of the units at the complex has occurred. Um, the Prime Minister said that there is a possible damage at the reactor number three, meaning more radioactive contamination may have leaked into the environment. It's possible, he said, that the pressure vessel, vessel containing the fuel rods in the reactor is damaged. Japan's nuclear safety agency said that radioactive substances had leaked to places far from the reactor. It's highly possible, said a spokesman for the agency, uh, that the reactor is seriously damaged. Now, reactor number three is a particular concern because it uses a potentially volatile mix of uranium and plutonium. Several workers at the plant were evacuated on Thursday with suspected radiation burns. It's understood that two of the reactors at the complex are now regarded as safe. They've been put into cold shutdown. The other four reactors remain very volatile, belching smoke and steam. Um, emergency workers have been trying to cool the overheating reactors by pumping in seawater. The U.S. government is shipping two million liters of fresh water to the plant in a pair of barges. Uh, there are concerns that as the seawater boils off, salt is left behind, coating the mixed oxide fuel rods and preventing them from becoming effectively cooled. The evacuation zone now for the Japanese government, effective mandatory zone, is 20 miles. This is affecting all the people who have been warned to stay indoors. The police are now going to their front doors, knocking and making the move. Death toll jumped officially past 10,000 today. Um, 17, uh, more than 17 and a half thousand are still listed as missing. Uh, so they're expecting the number of dead to actually surpass 18,000. Applied Insurance Research came in uh, now two weeks after the quake with a uh, revision of the preliminary loss estimate. They've analyzed newly available ground motion data as well as analyzing high-resolution satellite imagery, AIR now is coming out with a revised insured loss estimate for the quake at uh, between 20 billion U.S. and 30 billion U.S. Uh, the combined insured loss estimate is comprised of insured losses from ground shaking and fire following. Uh, that's between 11 billion and 21 billion U.S. and from the insured losses from the tsunami which they have coming in at about 8 billion to about 9.7 billion U.S. This is a little bit less than what they had uh, estimated two weeks ago. The IR's loss estimate includes payouts from the Japan Earthquake Reinsurance Company and is net of government recoveries. Swiss Re's Vita Capital 4 Series 2 notes have become the second securitized instrument to be clearly designated as, quote, at risk as a result of the Japanese tsunami. Uh, the ever-increasing death toll begins to approach the trigger point for these notes. The notes are related to increased mortality levels in Japan and the U.S. S&P has also put Platinum Underwriters Topiary Capital Series 2008-1 notes on credit watch with negative implications. To cause a default, there has to be a 7.5% increase in mortality 
on a predefined increase, on a predefined index, the kind of increase that would normally be associated with a pandemic rather than a catastrophe. The index is complex, but an evenly spread out event causing 50,000 deaths could trigger a loss. This is according to calculations from risk management solutions. S&P has put the notes on Credit Watch negative, reflecting its view that there was an increased likelihood of reaching that 7.5% level between now and the expiration date, which is the end of next year, even if the Japan event does not trigger it now. The ratings agency said that it expected to resolve the Credit Watch placement once there is more clarity regarding the number of deaths. The Vita Capital Limited is a uh, Cayman's-based SPV Series 3 is a $100 million deal. It was seen by the rating agencies as one of the safer sets of securitizations. It got a double B-plus rating from S&P. Well, here's a strange story. Dow Jones is running with this. Um, the headline is, Nafila Hedge Fund May Be Exposed After Japan Quake. Listen carefully. There's no uh, first-hand evidence, at least, that's uh, attributed to anybody. Nafila Capital is a $2 billion Bermuda-based hedge fund firm that they say might be headed for problems as a result of its exposure in the catastrophe risk market. Uh, the firm will likely suffer losses from the Japan quake, according to two hedge fund investors who insisted on remaining anonymous. One of the investors said Nafila was down about 1.5% in February as a result of the New Zealand quake, and they were hit again two weeks ago as a result of the Japan quake. That performance uh, grade won't be clear until after the end of March. Uh, and the field did not return any messages, but a spokesman for them did say that performance of the firm's hedge funds is something that, as a manager, we cannot disclose. The field was founded in 1997 by Frank Majors and Greg Haygood. They invest in cat bonds, and they offer reinsurance uh, uh, called retrocessional reinsurance. They received an investment in 08 from the Mann Group, which purchased 25% of the firm for $50 million. Um, Nabila's cat fund has returned almost 6% a year since it started in 1999. Global stocks over that period have had an annualized loss of one-tenth of 1%. The bond market, in comparison, returned 5.6%. Nabila did better than both, of course. Here's the premise of the story. Since the value of cat bonds fell after the event, um, an index run by Swiss Re uh, said that they dropped from 97.75 to 96.18 during the week ending March 18th. Because cat bonds have dropped over a point, somebody decided to write this story. No confirmation from Nafila, no understanding as to whether or not they have an exposure in Japan, and no understanding whether or not the exposure in Japan was in the Sendai region. So um, I don't know. I uh, would be interested in getting a response to this, but the field apparently can't comment because of regulations. So it's one of those situations where they simply have to sit and take it. We'll keep on the story, and once the facts are known, we'll be sure to report them. There was a pretty strong earthquake along the uh, Thailand border with Myanmar in China. Uh, over 75 people have been killed. Here you can see it. There were a number of aftershocks. The quake was a uh, 6.1. 390 homes and 11 Buddhist monasteries and nine government buildings were destroyed or damaged. Actually, the quake was a 6.8, excuse me, shook buildings as far away as the Thai capital, Bangkok. Let's get that other uh, uh, map up. There was also a 5.1 off of Sendai, Japan. Uh, not that one, the one uh, you had just up. The Sendai, there we go. That red box out there, again, those are the numerous aftershocks that have occurred. The blue are uh, quakes that have occurred in the last 12 hours. Uh, the big red one there is one that occurred in the last hour. And uh, that's the one that's uh, uh, indicating that there was a quake uh, just now. There are no reports of any damage, no reports of any tsunami. But as you see, uh, that is in a rather perilous area right now. Here's an interesting story that was in Insurance Day today. Um, this is one of those ones that uh, you sort of uh, have an aha moment. Concern is mounting in the marine hull market about the prospect of total loss claims coming because pirates are holding vessels for uh, over a year in length. Wordings in many marine hull policies mean that ship owners are able to claim a total loss if they're denied access to their ship for more than 12 months. 
This notice of abandonment is a big concern for underwriters, according to Neil Smith, head of underwriting at the London at the Lloyd's Market Association. Negotiations are taking far longer uh, than ever to finalize. All of this is eating into the 12-month period. According to Smith, it's expanding out to a time scale that could impact on whatever that trigger might be. It's an area that underwriters are aware of, but at the end of the day, the policy is the policy. According to the European Union, it's been almost a year since the Panama flagged uh, 93,960 uh, dead weight uh, ship Iceberg 1 and the G Chun Tsai number 68 were hijacked. Uh, the crews are involved in both, a total of 30. It's not known whether either ship has been uh, served with a notice of abandonment on this clause. The difficult part here is that it remains to be seen whether ship owners would seek to make a claim under this deprivation clause. It could become a public relations disaster. If they make a claim, for all intents and purposes, the owner would be giving up and abandoning the crew. So uh, it's a tough situation people sitting on top of very valuable claims but being reluctant to make them because of the fact that the crew would be perceived of as having been abandoned. The stock market in New York is up about 72 points now. We'll go to a word from our sponsors. The American economy ended up growing more than had been estimated in the fourth quarter of the year. Um, GDP was revised up to an annualized rate of 3.1%. Uh, analysts had been expecting a rise to 3.0%. Uh, for the whole of 2010 now, the American economy grew 2.9%. Cor corporate profits grew 20.4%, the most since 2004. Well, here in New Jersey, um, Governor Chris Christie uh, signed into law earlier this week legislation that would make the state the third state in the United States that cuts reinsurance collaterals from the previous 100% level. The newly approved act called the Reinsurance and Surplus Lines Stimulus Enhancement Act also changes New Jersey's approach to surplus lines licensing. It allows a domestic insurer to become a domestic surplus lines carrier in the state. Similar surplus lines rules are already in place in Illinois and that element of the new New Jersey law is just about identical to the Illinois law. So now we have Florida and we have New York and we have New Jersey that have all reduced the alien collateral requirements. Speaking of Florida, uh, the Florida State Senate signaled its opposition to U.S. government plans to levy more tax on Bermuda reinsurers. A bill passed by the uh, legislature in Florida puts on record its opposition to plans by the U.S. President Barack Obama to add the taxes to a non-U.S. reinsurer. Tax revenues estimated in the President's budget that he just put out calls for a collection of $2.6 billion from these insurers over 10 years. The Florida legislature believes that that amount will result in higher premiums for Floridian insurance buyers. Um, Bermuda-based companies providing reinsurance for their U.S. affiliates would be impacted. Other hurricane-prone states have voiced similar concerns. The Louisiana State Legislature passed a resolution opposing the tax proposal last year, and similar legislation has been introduced in Texas. Uh, the Coalition for Competitive Insurance Rates, an uh, unusual group name, which counts the Association of Bermuda Insurers and Reinsurers as its members applauded the Florida State Senate for their stance yesterday. They said while a small handful of profitable domestic insurers will see their profits increase if this tax increase is passed, the rest of us will face higher costs to insure our homes and businesses. A large group of American domestics have backed uh, the President's plan, including uh, William Berkeley at uh, Berkeley Insurance. Nearly two-thirds of all reinsurance required uh, to protect American consumers and businesses is provided by non-U.S. reinsurance companies or their affiliates.
Well, it's happened again. It seems to happen relatively frequently, usually around spring plowing time. Uh, this is in southern Poland. A nine-year-old brother and sister uh, were ending up uh, playing in a field that had been plowed for spring planting near the village of Konskowala, and uh, they stumbled upon uh, World War II era bombs. They exploded. Uh, both child, both children died. It happens uh, very frequently in Europe this time of year. Well, in our final story, um, let's pull up this picture. This, of course, is uh, Muammar Gaddafi sitting at the UN listening to a speech. He looks horrible. Um, there is a, uh, a story that's uh, being circulated by the Associated Press uh, from a Brazilian plastic surgeon who said that he was escorted. Here he is, uh, the gentleman on uh, Gaddafi's right, your left. Um, this is, uh, let's get his name here, it's Dr. Leocir Ribeiro. Um, he performed a facelift operation on Gaddafi. Um, he shaved uh, years off his appearance by removing fat from his belly and injecting it into his wrinkled face. The Libyan leader also received hair plugs. The doctor said that Gaddafi told him he'd been in power at the time for 25 years and he didn't want the young people of his nation to see him as an old man. Uh, the secret of four-hour procedure was in fact performed in 1995. It was done at Gaddafi's insistence with local anesthesia because he wanted to remain alert. Halfway through the operation, the Libyan leader stopped to have a hamburger. Um, the doctor warned Gaddafi that the effects of the operation he performed would last only for five years. It had an expiration date, after which the skin would sag and wrinkles would appear. Uh, Gaddafi said he'd call me back if he needed to come back. They did call back, but I had a family obligation, and I've never heard from them again. Um, after the procedure, according to the doctor, he looked 10 years younger. The doctor is speaking out now only to provide insight into Gaddafi, whose uh, personal habits are not particularly well known. The doctor said that the 68-year-old leader is not looking very good these days. He appears jowly, his skin is puffy, loose, and deeply creased. Uh, to let potential patients know that I operated on him would be counterproductive to my practice. That's true. I was thinking about Gaddafi, and then I thought of this picture. Let's pull this one up. On the right, of course, is one of the worst botched plastic surgery jobs in the history of the world. That's Mickey Rourke, whose appearance was changed from a rather uh, flippant, charming young Irish-American into a uh, Neanderthal Cro-Magnon view. You can see that they look like they were separated at birth. I guess that's what happens when your plastic surgery goes bad. Well, our condolences are with the general, or the colonel, or whatever appellation he goes by. Um, as we speak, he's being hunted by uh, air forces of 23 nations. That's all the news that we have for today. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. Thank you for watching, and have a good weekend.